Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Trey Station. It is great to be here. I'm a little late. A little bit of an issue, as always. Big shocker. Um, anyway, so I have a couple of stories for you today. I have this great book, Jet the Cat is Not a Cat. And that's by Faya Creed. This was suggested to me by my lovely friend, Annette Kate, who is the author of The Magic Rabbit, one of my faves. Um, so this is a really cute story. I think that you guys are going to love it. I love it so much. And today is National Hot Dog Day. <laughs> Did you guys know that? Happy Hot Dog Day. If you didn't have dinner yet, have a hot dog. Um, I didn't have a hot dog, but I wanted one, but... Anyway, um, and I also have two, well, I have one hot dog story, and I have a couple of facts about hot dogs for you. It's great. The history of hot dogs. Amazing. And then, of course, I have a couple of hot dog jokes, because you got to have a joke. So I'm going to start with my wrap. Make sure you guys pop in and say hi so I can give you a shout out. First, I wanted to say happy birthday to Walker, my loyal story breaker. I love Walker. Walker, happy birthday. I hope you have the best, best birthday. Um, and that's that. So, hello, my friends. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Trace Station. It's an imaginary place. Come and have a look. In every single corner, there's an awesome book. I'll read you my stories while dressed up weird. I may look like a princess or sometimes have a beard. I may be a doggy, maybe a fox, maybe a bunny, maybe an ox. Whatever the look, I'll be sure to thrive as I try to make your reading adventure come alive. My goal is to make you want to read more. Maybe find a book that you really adore. So don't be shy. Come on in because everybody's welcome at the train station. Hey, welcome everybody. Hello. Okay, so... Let's start with some jokes. I have, let's see. Why did the hot dog want to be tutored? <laughs> because he wanted to make it on the honor roll. <laughs> My favorite. How can you make a hot dog sit down? You can't. They don't have legs. They can't sit down. <laughs> I made that one up. Can you tell? Um, let me see. Oh, what do you call a hot dog that is frozen? A chili dog. <laughs> and then, what do you call a hot dog that has all of its insides taken out? A Halloweeny. <laughs> That's a cute one. I told my friend that, and he was like, "Is it a meat straw?" <laughs> Gross, guys. Ew. Anyway, no. Halloweeny. Isn't that funny? All right. So let's start with Jet the Cat. I fell in love with this story. It's super cute. And it's about being yourself, which I love. So this is written by Faya Creed. I hope I'm saying her name right. And it's illustrated by Terry Runyon. This was actually sent to me. I have an autographed copy of it very excited about it. Um, it's such a cute story. And the author signed it. Guys, there's nothing like getting a, a book with the signature. How cool, right? How cool. How exciting to add to my collection. Very exciting. So, Jet the Cat is not a cat. Written by Faye Creed and illustrated by Terry Runyon. Jet is a cat just like any other cat. She loves to pounce, she loves to sprawl, and of course, she loves to swim. She loves to swim all day until the sun goes down and even a little bit after, just like any other cat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> he kind of looks like my cat, Othello. Well, actually, real cats can't stand water. We can't, asks Jed. We can't, says Tom the cat. You are not a cat. You are a frog. 
Huh? Says Jet. And with the shrug, she dives back in. Tom the cat. What does he know? Jet is a frog, just like any other frog. She loves to swim, she loves to eat bugs, and of course, she sings in a high voice, Meow! Brrr. Just like any other frog. Well, to be honest, even our tiniest tadpoles sing low. Oh, yeah. Really? Truly? asks Jet. Truly? Really? says Bull the Frog. You are not a frog. You are a bird. Weird, says Jet. And with a sigh, she climbs on up. Jet is a bird, just like any other bird. She loves to eat bugs, she loves to sing high, and of course, when she jumps from a tree, she falls flat, just like any other bird. Well, technically, flying is kind of what we do best. That's not true, says Jet. Oh, it's true, says Blue the Bird. You are not a bird, you are a goat. Huh? Says Jet. And with a grunt, she trots off. Jet is a goat. Just like any other goat. Totally flightless. Check. Born to prance, you know it. And of course, she's completely beard free. Just like any other goat. Sorry, babe. A goat is not a goat without a fad log beard. No way, says Jet. Oh way, says Billy the goat. You are not a goat. You are a... And he's thinking, and he's thinking. Pig. No. Maybe a mole. A skunk. A skink. Platypus. Sud bear. Goblin shark. Pig fairy armadillo. Friendly school librarian. I can't do this anymore. Whales jet. Jet goes home for a nice long swim. She feels like herself again. Now she has something to say to all these creatures still arguing about what she can or cannot be. Listen up, says Jet. I am a cat, unlike any other cat, but I'm still a cat, and a great cat at that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do on my backstroke. But as she turns to go, what do you guys think happens? ruh -ro. Something pretty cool. Uh, my beard is fake. My best friend is a mouse. I don't care for cheese. I sing soprano. And I'm more of a runner. <laughs> so they all have different qualities than the animals they are, because everyone is unique. Well, grins Jet the cat, what's wrong with that? Aww. Look at them all smiling. Isn't that great? Then they all swim, run, sing, explore, and play around until the sun goes down. And 
even a little bit after. And that, my friends, is the end of that story. Isn't that great? And that's them all playing and being themselves and loving themselves for who they are. We are all different, and that is good. That is okay. All right, let me see. Who is here? If you didn't say hello, make sure you do so I know who's there. Hi, Janita. Hi, Ellen. I know I love cat stories, too. A real wiener. Ooh, thank you. <laughs> oh, you reminded me of a joke. What did the hot dog um, get called when he won an award? Oscar Meyer Wiener. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, happy magical birthday. That goes to Walker. Hi, Michelle. So, yeah, guys, make sure that um, you... Pop in and say something so I can give you a hello. Hi, Tristan. Thanks for joining, Cuticles. Oh, and Jacques. Hello, Jacques. Thank you for joining the trees. Yes. All right. So now I have this great story, and it's called Hangry. And hangry is when what? You're hungry and you're angry. You're hangry. And this is a cool monster. Look at him. He's hungry. He's angry. He's angry. <laughs> and he's angry over a hot dog. All right. So this is the hot dog segment. All right. So this one I got at Haverhill Public Library, which is fantabulous. I got both books. Hi, Donna, at Haverhill Public Library. And this was by Drew Brockington. Okay. So here you first see him in the city. And he's all excited. He has a little food menu in his hand. Can you see that? Okay. And it's called Hot Diggity Dog. Fun fact. Did you guys know Hot Dog was Mickey Mouse's first line? Isn't that amazing? I know! Amazing. All right. Here we go. Ooh, smells. I'm hungry. I can't wait to eat. Best hot dog ever at Hot Diggity Dog. Uh-oh. Hot Diggity Dog closed for vacation. Uh, now I'm You have food. Uh-oh. Guys, I just saw my computer freeze. Did I freeze to you? Cuz I'll go a little bit slower if I don't know why. That's weird. Do you guys see me okay? Mm. Okay. Everybody has food but me. My stomach is uncontrollable. My mind is a raging beast. I'm hungry. I'm angry. I'm hungry. I'm angry. I'm hungry. I'm angry. I'm hungry. I'm angry. <laughs> How many times are you going to say it? Clearly he's hungry and he's angry. I am hangry! <laughs> See how we got bigger? You ever feel like the angrier you get, you just become like, rawr, like a raging maniac? <laughs> Look at all the people running. Did you guys see this? They're running in the streets. Look at them. Help! <laughs> oh my God, that's so funny. Give me food. Uh, how about some cabbage? That will do. A uh, truckload of broccoli? If I must. Oh, that stinks. I'm sorry it froze for a second. I don't know why. That's so weird. 
That's why I was late. When I first logged in, it said the event streaming was having difficulty. I don't know why. So maybe that's why. Sorry. Nom, 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 nom. Burp. I am still not satisfied. I want more. Beep. And that's a little cop in his hand. You see him? Hangry really is a great word. You ever get your so hungry that you get annoyed? Happens to the best of us guys. Sniff, sniff. What is that aroma? Hot dogs? <laughs> Those are my favorite. One hot dog, please. You got it, bud. Ketchup? Oh, yes. Mustard? Of course. Relish? Sure. Onion? Don't hold back. And he is so happy. Look at how happy the monster is. See how excited he is? How cool is that? You get like that when you have like your favorite food waiting for you. Yum in the tongue. Down the hatch. And he's all excited to, to, to eat the hot dog. And what happens? Uh-oh. A pigeon came and stole the hot dog. ruh -roh. That bird took my hot dog. Hey, bud. Now I'm really hangry. Get that pigeon. <laughs> Look at his eyes. Look at how mad he is, guys. Look at these pictures. Aren't they great? Good stuff. There he is. I missed. Almost got it. Darn. Shoot. He's getting away. Uh, hey, people. <laughs> Look at the guy on the bottom. You see him over here? He's trying to get everyone's attention. Why? Look at, they have helicopters trying to get him, people with nets. Why is the guy trying to f get their attention? Let's find out. I got it. I don't got it. It's gone forever. <laughs> ah. Look at him. How sad. I miss my hot dog. Mm, grumble. I'm still hungry. And I'm still angry. <laughs> He's biting the building. You see this, guys? Hashtag ouch. I'm still hungry. Uh, excuse me, giant monster. I still have plenty of hot dogs. You do? I probably have enough for everyone. <laughs> Hi, Rob. I know. When I found out it was National Hot Dog Day, I was going to go and get a hot dog, but the place is weird on a highway, so I did it. Could I have extra onions? <laughs> you got it, bud. <laughs> How cute is he? Now you're going to see something really cool. Ready? Watch. Nom, 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 nom. Thanks for the hot dog. Goodbye. Look at what happens to the monster. What's happening? He's getting smaller because he's calming down, right? Isn't that cool? And that's the end of the story. And there he is on the train waving goodbye to you. <laughs> Isn't that so cute?
I thought this story was super cute. I loved it so much. Hangry by Drew Brockington. So, so far we had Hangry by Drew Brockington. And then we had, whoops, sorry. Jet the Cat is not a cat by Thea Creed. I really hope I'm saying that right. Okay, guys. So, now I have... Hold on. Where's my other book? Oh. This is called Hot Diggity Dog. And this is the history of the hot dog. You're going to learn things here that are going to amaze you. It's really small, so I'm not going to read all of it, but I'll read you the parts that I think that you'll really like. All right. So this is, again, from Haverhill Public Library, which I just absolutely love. This is by Adrian Silver, and it's illustrated by Elwood H. Smith. And it starts off, Hot Diggity Dog, which, if you ever watched Mickey Mouse, you'd know the song, Hot Dog, Hot Dog, Hot Diggity Dog. <laughs> and Mickey Mouse sings that. All right. So, and that was his first line. I thought that was amazing. All right. So... Hot Diggity Dog. It's the 4th of July. Red, white, and blue streamers decorate the park. Fireworks will boom in the sky tonight. And what will Americans be eating? Hot dogs. Hot dogs are one of America's favorite foods, especially during the summer. In fact, if you line up 2 billion hot dogs we eat each July, that would stretch more than 190,000 miles. Imagine... That's enough to circle the earth seven times. How did hot dogs become such a popular treat? The answer to that mystery is a fun journey through history and a peek into cultures around the world. The story begins thousands of years ago in Europe. So, Franks, Wieners, and Red Hots are nicknames for hot dogs. Uh, more Franks are eaten in July than in any other month. Maybe that's why July is National Hot Dog Month. It's also National Ice Cream, Watermelon, Baked Beans, and Blueberry Month. Who knew? So when I'm teaching during the year, I love to find out like what, you know, like what day is happening, uh, and have my kids write about it. So I actually have to thank Lorenzo for reminding me that today was Hot Dog Day. In the beginning, hot dogs are kind of sausage. So where does sausage come from? It's one of history's oldest meals. In fact, sausage is old enough to be mentioned in the Odyssey, an ancient Greek poem. Sausage became a popular snack with the help of a Roman cook named Gaius. Gaius was a chef for Nero Claudius Caesar, a leader of the mighty Roman Empire. One day, Chef Gaius cut into a roasted pig and noticed its puffy intestines. He decided to make a new dish by stuffing the intestines with spices and ground meat. The Romans loved his sausage. Soon Roman festivals featured sausages as delicacies. Word of the tasty treat spread throughout the huge empire. And the word sausage comes from the Latin word salsus, meaning salted. Okay. And here's just a fun fact. The ancient Romans are lying on couches because they thought sitting up while eating was bad manners. Isn't that funny? Who doesn't want to lay down and have a sandwich? <laughs> or a hot dog? These pictures are much smaller. But I just thought it was really cool, the little things it tells you. It says, Frankfurter and Wiener are nicknames for the hot dog. Frankfurter's from Frankfurt, Germany, and wiener from the German word wien, meaning Vienna. Who named the hot dog? No one knows for sure. Here's one theory. The shape of the hot dog resembles the shape of a long, skinny dachshund, dachshund dog. German sausage vendors used to shout, Get your red hot dachshund sausages! Imagine? And over time, the name was shortened to hot dog. Isn't that so funny? And it said, Frankfurt had a huge party in 1987. 
to celebrate the 500th anniversary of the hot dog in that city. So old. Okay. It says, my name isn't hot dog. One day, long after the fall of the Roman Empire, a sausage maker invented the recipe for the modern hot dog. But the tasty dog's exact birthplace is an unsolved puzzle. Germans say the first hot dog was made in Frankfurt, Germany in the 1400s. Austrians claim the first wiener was eaten in Vienna, Austria. Whatever, wherever the hot dog got its start, there's no mystery about its arrival in the New World. Immigrants from Europe brought the special sausage to America in the 1860s. Imagine that. How long it's been around. Isn't that cool? Welcome to the USA. In the 19th century, Boats crowded with immigrants arrived in America. The new Americans worked long, hard hours. They looked for cheap food that could be prepared quickly. Hot dogs made by German and Austrian immigrants were just the thing for a fast meal. Push carts filled with hot dogs been appearing on street corners in big cities. At first, hot dogs were sold without a bun. Imagine picking your lunch up off the grill with bare fingers. Ouch. One vendor gave his customers gloves, but so many people walked off with the expensive mitts that the hot dog seller feared he would go broke. Finally, he asked his brother-in-law, a baker, for help, and the baker made a special roll <laughs> to fit the favorite sausage. Voila! The modern hot dog served in a bun was born. Isn't that crazy? And it says, let's see. Uh, some of the world's favorite foods originally come from North and South America. Um, peanut butter can be traced back to the Inca Indians in South America. Other foods native to the Americas include potatoes, tomatoes, corn, squash, sunflower seeds, maple sugar, chocolate, and blueberries. Craziness. Pizza from Naples, Italy. Ice cream from China. French fries from Belgium and France. Look up your food, guys. Look up your favorite food. Google it. Find out where does that food come from. It's really interesting to see. Who eats the most hot dogs? Number one, L.A., Los Angeles. Number two, New York. Number three, Chicago. Four, San Antonio, and five, Philadelphia. Those are the top five. It says, dogs fit for a king. In 1939, King George VI of England visited America. President Franklin D. Roosevelt wanted to serve the king something special, and he decided to give him a delightful hot dog sandwich. <laughs> oh, my goodness, is that funny. It says, in the 1930s, many people couldn't find jobs that would pay to feed and clothe their families. Most, however, could afford a nickel for a hot dog. The cheap, tasty hot dog became more popular than ever. A nickel. Isn't that crazy, guys? Look at that. Hot dogs. Who knew? Okay. Let's see. Uh... In the late 1800s, hot dog vendors realized that their sausages were easy to cook, eat, and sell almost anywhere, even in crowded baseball stadiums. Sports fans soon came to love hot dogs. It's traditional to chow down on a hot dog when cheering on your team at a baseball game. Other countries have their own traditional stadium foods. In Japan, you might snack on edamame or chilled soybean pods while watching the game. In South Africa, soccer fans eat itambolo, which are like dumplings, or beetroot salad at the match. And at Mexican ballparks, fans fill, out, fill up on empanadas, tamales, and tacos. All sound delicious. Cool. How cool is that? See that? So hot dogs were easy and affordable and easy to make. Let me see. 
Few families had time to cook fancy dinners every night, so the hot dog was an easy answer for a fast meal. To keep up with the demand, hot dog makers opened factories where they could crank out thousands of links at a time. In 1957, July was declared National Hot Dog Month. Isn't that funny? So here are some famous hot dog stands. Uh, Der Wiener Schnitzel, that's in Las Vegas, Nevada. Tail O the Pup, that's in California. Hillbilly Hot Dogs, West Virginia. Spike's Junkyard Dogs. <laughs> Listen to these names, how cool. Mustard's Last Stand. Swanky Franks, Poochies, Wiener World, Woofies, and Demon Dogs. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. Okay. It says the hot dog farm. How are all these hot dogs made? Hot dogs are usually made from a variety of meats, such as beef, pork, chicken, or turkey. Recently, vegetarian veggie dogs hit the scene. Each hot dog maker has a secret recipe of meats or vegetables and spices. The meats or veggies are chopped into small parts and blended with breadcrumbs, flour, and seasonings. The gooey hot dog batter is pumped into a thin plastic tube to hold it together, and then it's cooked or smoked. Finally, the hot dog takes a bath in cool water, and its plastic is peeled away. The hot dogs are shipped off to supermarkets in refrigerated trucks. <laughs> Enjoy your Sonic. <laughs> oh, goodness. And here they talk about a couple of different hot dogs. Um, for instance, a Chicago dog is topped with yellow mustard, dark relish, onions, tomato slices, and celery salt served on a poppy seed bun. Then you have Kansas City dogs with sauerkraut and melted Swiss cheese on a sesame seed bun. That sounds delicious. New York City dogs with steamed onions and pale yellow mustard. Coney Island dogs topped with a spicy meat mixture. Southern slaw dogs topped with coleslaw. Corn dogs are placed on a stick dipped in cornbread batter and deep fried. Tex-Mex dogs with salsa, Monterey Jack cheese, and chopped jalapeno poppers, pigs in a blanket wrapped in pastry and baked, and Lily's Lilliputians are mini hot dogs often served as an appetizer. Isn't that cool? Guys, am I making you hungry? <laughs> am I making you hungry? <laughs> Nothing like a hot dog. I really want a hot dog. My friend makes fun of me because I say hot dog. Hot dog. He says hot dog. He'd say he doesn't say that, but he does. All right. So it says grab a dog. You've grilled it, boiled it, or fried it. Is your stomach growling? You're almost ready to eat. First, you have to decide if you want any condiments or toppings on your dog. Traditional toppings include mustard, ketchup, chili, chopped sweet pickles called relish, and pickled cabbage called sauerkraut. But there are endless possibilities. You can see the diversity of this cuisine and all the people in many different hot dogs that we create. Sometimes I like my hot dog with no bun. But the best hot dogs I like are at a barbecue <gasps> on the grill. Yum and the tum and something but coleslaw is icky. <laughs> hey, everyone has their opinion, Donna. I hear you, lady. I, coleslaw is okay. It says, imagine getting paid. Oh, this is crazy. Imagine getting paid to eat. Competitive eaters do. There are eating contests for everything from watermelon to chicken wings to asparagus. A group called Major League Eating runs official contests. Nathan's famous 4th of July International Hot Dog Eating Contest has been held each year since 1916 at Coney Island. The winner is the person who can eat the most hot dogs in 10 minutes. Wow. In recent years, ESPN has broadcast the event and tens of thousands of fans turn up to watch. Are you ready? In 2009, 
Joey Chestnut of San Jose, California, won the International Hot Dog Eating Contest by eating 68 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes. That's a lot. For his speed eating efforts, he won $20,000. That's $294.11 per hot dog. <laughs> and then, eating records have been set for nearly every type of food. There's the 170 M&M eaten in three minutes with chopsticks, 15 pounds of strawberry shortcake gobbled in eight minutes, wow, 71 tamales in 12 minutes, and 26 grilled cheese sandwiches in 10 minutes. Oh my God. Oh, and then they have a little joke on the bottom. Why did the man put a sweater on his hot dog? Because it was a chili dog. <laughs> Ah, that's funny. Look at the monsters eating the hot dog. Eating contests are really funny. I've never been to one, but I've seen them on TV and they just make me laugh. More in movies, but it's still funny. All right. Let's see. Healthy dogs. It's not healthy or safe to stuff yourself like a competitive eater. If you try to eat too much, you could choke or make yourself sick. Professional eaters must be at least 18 years old and often follow special diets to gradually stretch their stomachs. Most nutrition experts agree that too much of any food isn't good for you. But treats are, I'm sorry, but treats every so often are just fine. So if you love hot dogs, it's okay to eat one once in a while. Hot dogs have some protein, a very important nutrient, but can also be high in fat and sodium, unless you're eating the veggie kind. Uh, okay. Look at this guy holding up his hot dog. That's funny. Future dogs. Food changes over time. Vegetarian hot dogs have become popular as more people pay attention to healthy eating. Organic hot dogs are now made for hot dog lovers who are concerned about the effects of chemicals on the environment and in food. What's in the future for the hot dog? Maybe you'll become famous for discovering a new type of hot dog. How about a healthy celery dog? A hot dog that can be eaten underwater or one that can be grown like a plant in outer space. <laughs> it says, when Russell Emil was seven, he demanded peanut butter on everything. His mother asked a local meat company to make a peanut butter flavored hot dog. Ew. And they did. And these nutty dogs were a big hit. Not over here they wouldn't be, but hey, good for him. And then space dogs. The Apollo 2 astronauts were the first to eat hot dogs in space. It was 1969 when Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. Along with their dogs, the astronauts enjoyed hot coffee, canned peaches, and sugar cookies. Imagine. Isn't that interesting? History of the hot dog. <laughs> oh, I do say hot dog. Ah, well, whatever. And it says, all foods have a story. Throughout the history of food, we can learn about faraway lands and people. Sometimes the foods we eat can reveal secrets about our own histories. What do your favorite foods have to say about you? Whether you adore pickles or corn or pizza, there are plenty of ways to find out more about your favorite snacks. First, start with your family. Ask them. Do you have special recipes passed down from your ancestors? You can research food by going to the library or a bookstore or by doing some detective work on the internet. Take a trip to a food museum. By the time you're through, you may have enough info for your own book. Certainly, you'll have a happy stomach and a good story. How cool is that? And then this just has family recipes, hot and tangy dogs, classic Frank and beans. Uh, and that's it. How cool is that? History of the hot dog. Hot diggity dog. And I want you to remember that that again was Mickey Mouse's first line. And I want to say it was in 1929. Let me just double check that. So I don't give you the wrong info. 
almost positive. Hold on. Uh. Yep. 1929. His first words. How cool is that? Hot dog. So, that's it, my friends. Happy Hot Dog Day. <laughs> I hope you liked my stories. I hope you liked um, Jet the Cat. It was, I really loved that one um, by Faya Creed. Faya, thank you so much for the book. It's awesome. Um, thank you, Annette, for suggesting it. You rock. Um, and I hope you learned something about a hot dog. You're welcome, Janita. Guys, thank you so much again for coming in. Rob and Donna and Janita and Ellen, Tristan, Jacques. Let me see who else. Uh, Michelle. Janita, Ellen, I already said. Um, for Walker, when you watch this, happy birthday, my friend. I hope you're having the best night. And that's it, my friend. So I'm going to end out with my rap one more time because I know you like to hear it. <laughs> I know you're trying to learn it. So, goodbye, my friends. Goodbye, my friends. You were at the tree station. It's an imaginary place. You came and had a look. In every single corner, there was an awesome book. <laughs> I read my stories while I was dressed up weird. I wasn't a princess and I didn't have a beard. Um, I might have been a dog, maybe a fox, maybe an owl, maybe an ox. Whatever the look, I'll be sure to thrive as I try to make you read an adventure come alive. My goal was to make you want to read more. Maybe you found a book that you really adore, so don't be shy. Come on in, because everybody's always welcome at the train station. I threw an always in there. Hey. Guys, thank you so much. This was a long one. I will see you next Wednesday at the trade station. Have a good night. Stay safe. Happy hot dog day. <laughs> Happy hot dog day. Do you like my hat? My hot dog? It has mustard. Oh, can you see it? It has mustard. <laughs> you too, Janita. Thank you so much. You came for the accent. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I'm from Rivia. Have a hot dog. <laughs> Anyway, guys, have a great night. I'll see you next time at the Trey Station. Like and share, like and share. Tell your friends. And thank you for joining. I went from 300 and I think 28 to 3, almost 90. Holy moly. So if you're not following, please follow. Tell your friends. Let's get me up there. And that's it, guys. Take care. Have a great night. And I'll see you next time on the Trey Station. Bye.